Hello, it's John Heaton. So I'm going to talk about the Let It Be 50th anniversary stuff which has come out. Been gobbling it all up on Spotify, listening to it intently over the weekend. Picked up the single CD version only, didn't figure I wanted to spend more. I just bought this just in case Giles Martin had uh, made some improvements on the original. I wasn't expecting him to really, um, but this was quite reasonably priced, nicely packaged um, with nice booklet here, not so keen on the grey, but nice introduction from Paul McCartney and nice sleeve notes from that uh, long-standing Beatles historian Kevin Howlett, who obviously gave us, among other things, the, the, the BBC Beatles stuff. Um, so I listened to the album a couple of times, plus the outtakes um, quite a few times over the weekend. As I say, I've spent a fortune over the years on bootlegs particularly Let It Be Bootlegs, because it's the most, has to be the most bootlegged month out of any band ever. And uh, I think I've got six or seven bootlegs, um, including this vinyl bootleg of the original Glyn Johns <coughs> May 69 Get Back, which was rejected. Um, uh, so I wasn't expecting to hear too much in terms of surprises. Um, it's nice to, to get a good audio quality of the rooftop Don't Let Me Down performance with George joining in on the vocals in the chorus. That's nice. Uh, one After Nine and Nine, track three, sorry, take three. I hadn't heard that before. That was quite interesting, although none of these outtakes are actually end, going to end up bearing repeated listening. I mean, it's a bit similar when the Let It Be Naked thing came out in 2003. I was very excited about it for a couple of months, played it non-stop, and then found myself, like a lot of people, going back to the original album, because that's the one we grew up with. Um, same thing happened with the anthology, nice to have it, nice to hear the outtakes, but it's not, you know, well, I don't particularly go back to the anthology many times and play the tracks, um, nice to have. So some duplication there in terms of what's on this package versus what was on Let It Be Naked and Anthology. I think that's fair to say. Um, what other? What else is interesting on the outtakes? We've got a short version of Give Me Some Truth, which is tantalising because obviously it turned into that storming rocker on Imagine, but uh, John and Paul are working that out here. Um, but it's, it's, as I say, very short. Nice instrumental version of I Me Mine from January 1970. Um, what else have we got? I know Dave Costello was saying they didn't. He was disappointed they didn't have things like another day. But I would have thought that's a very short snippet if it does exist. And I think I might have heard it's without vocals for the most part and just just a bit of doodling on the piano, but vaguely reminiscent of the tune. So I, I don't think there's a kind of you know Beatles demo version of another day out there if that's what anyone's expecting. Um, so I guess one of the the main pluses of getting the, the deluxe set is to get the, the Glyn Johns mixes and I was intently listening to these to see whether my opinion would have improved with listening to them in pristine quality versus on a bootleg and for the most part I found myself if I was in the bits I was annoyed with on the original one I was annoyed with still I think um, his selection of tracks is is leaves a lot to be desired. We've got this link track called Rocker and then Save the Last Dance for Me sung woefully out of tune. God knows why that was included. The version of Dig It is famously way too long on here and was rightly shortened for the album by Phil Spector. Um, and his sequence Let It Be in Long on Riding Road back to back towards the end of side two, which I just don't really understand because those are the two big McCartney ballads and they need to be separated. Um, the version of Two of Us on the Glyn Johns album is an inferior mix to the 31st Jan performance and John and Paul singing different words in a couple of the verses um, just because it was an early take. For You Blue um, is okay, can hear the acoustic quite well in that but um, I think the final version on the album is the definitive one with George's vocal from 8th of January 1970 with the Go Johnny Go and all that and uh, perhaps the Glyn Johns' biggest crime is to include a woefully incomplete version of I've Got a Feeling, which actually breaks down halfway through, or slightly, after, slightly more than halfway through. And when the, when the drums and instruments come in after Paul's vocal at the beginning with the guitar, it's, it's out of tune. 
and John at the end says I cocked it up trying to get loud. Well, it's all very well to show, you know, authentic uh, fly on the wall, Beatles, warts and all, but, you know, a track like I've Got a Feeling deserves to be heard in all its magnificence, magnificence as it was on the, the final album, where Spectre turned up the guitars a notch, made them a lot louder, and uh, it's a complete version, and it's and it's a storming rocker. And uh, for some reason, that it was uh, a incomplete version was selected there. So anyway, enough on that. Um, there's a new re remix of the single, which I didn't really recognise much difference. Uh, a lot of people are reviewing this album and saying uh, things like um, Giles Martin restores the strings to the long and winding road. Well. Okay, the strings had disappeared for this album, and the strings had disappeared, the version on here, but they'd always been there on the Let It Be vinyl, the one we all know and love, and, and the 87 CD, and the 2009 CD, and then this new CD. So it's, it's not restored, it was always there. And, you know, I think Giles Martin did a good job on the production, but I don't think he deserves a huge amount of credit because I think Phil Spector had done the groundwork and it's a superbly produced album to begin with. And Giles Martin actually does, is slightly more generous towards him saying he got it right on quite a few occasions and uh, he's more generous to him than his father ever was. And George Martin, perhaps a little disillusioned with the Let It Be sessions because towards the beginning, John said, we don't need any of your production rubbish on this album. So George Martin was understandably hurt there, I think. Uh, one, one thing I've noticed about going back to this album, this is the beauty of the 50th that gets you back listening to the album, is John and Paul are consciously trying to rekindle their relationship and it comes across um, on this album because they're singing on each other's songs. Uh, Two of Us is a 100% McCartney song, but McCartney, uh, Lennon's basically singing a joint lead vocal uh, with a harmony, and which is delightful, and also tracks like a, One After Nine and Nine, John and Paul singing together, Dig a Pony, Paul's singing the harmony, and I've got a feeling they're all obviously singing together. So I think the one, the Beatle who was the most disgruntled during the Let It Be sessions, although you could argue it was John because he was wrapped up in Yoko, but I think he was more enjoying the sessions than George Harrison, who was the one who, he'd come back from the States where he'd been hanging out with Bob Dylan and the band and he returned to Twickenham and it was a miserable atmosphere and he didn't like it. and. For, for one reason or another, All Things Must Pass, that superb track was not featured on Let It Be or Abbey Road. So just for that reason alone, I could see why George was upset. I know there were reasons for it. And I, I enjoyed the video from Pop Goes the 60s, Matt Williamson discussing this issue. And there's, it's a complex um, set of reasons why All Things Must Pass wasn't selected. But I think it's, list from what I've heard, John and Paul were not particularly taking J George's song seriously in the studio as much as when they were working on their own. So uh, I'm looking forward to the movie, obviously, Peter Jackson. The trailer is absolutely sensational. The quality is brilliant. You've even got Paul saying, in 50 years time, people will be laughing about the Beatles splitting because Yoko sat on an amp. And here we are 50 years later laughing at stuff like that, which he said back in 69. and. Uh, just from what I can see, it's going to be an absolute blast on, in November when it comes out. The only reservation I have is we don't have Disney Plus in Hungary, so I'm not sure how I'm going to see it. But that, so that's a challenge I have to overcome. But anyway, we'll come to that when we come to it. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.